Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, adding spaces to a string. The idea isn't too bad. We're given a string, something that might look like this, and we're given a list of indices. And every single one of these indices is going to be in strictly increasing order. So I guess there are not going to be any duplicates. And every one of these indices is going to be less than or equal to a valid index in uh, the string S. So none of these will be out of bounds. So this eight means that we would add a space right before the index eight in the string. So this is the character at index eight. So we would add a space character over here and then one at 13. So this is 13, so we'd add the space there and then one at 15. This is 15, so the space would go there. So then the new string would be this down here. Leak code with a space helps me learn. Conceptually, the problem is pretty simple. How exactly do we do this though? Rather than actually updating the string and inserting a space in those spots, which might be possible in some languages, but in most languages, it's not going to be efficient because you can't actually modify a string that would create a brand new string with a space uh, in that position. So that's going to be an O of N operation. If we do that for every one of these spaces, it's not going to be super efficient. But we can actually construct a new string manually by for each of these portions. So we could take this portion before the space and then add it to a array, at least in most languages. In Python, I'm going to be using an array because that will make it more efficient. So each of these characters will be added to an array. Let's say that's this portion. Then we will add the space character and then we'll add the next portion of characters and we'll just kind of keep going like that. And then um, eventually like this array of characters, we can in Python turn it into a string in an O of N operation. And the way we're gonna be doing this is pretty standard, I think, for these types of like string building or a pattern algorithms. It's going to be a two pointer approach. So let's briefly cover how we're gonna do that. And then we will code this up. So what are our two pointers actually going to be in this problem? Well, we're building the output. We don't really need a pointer for that because anytime we have something new, we're just gonna add it to the end of this. So we can just have like an array for the output, but we're gonna have a pointer at the string. And so we're at initially index zero. We're also gonna have a pointer um, for the other array and we're at index zero, but the position that this represents is actually index eight. So that's how this two pointer approach is gonna work. Think of the other pointer being in the array here, but since this one is further right now, we're just gonna be choosing characters from this pointer. So we will add this portion, this purple portion, and then eventually the two pointers will both be at this position at uh, index eight. And at that point, we will say, now it's time to add a space. So this pointer here will then be shifted to the right. It'll be over here. That space will have been inserted. And now that pointer will not have been shifted to position nine. It will actually be at position 13. So like over here. So I'll quickly just redraw this. Uh, the pointer for S is here. And then the pointer for this is going to be at 13. So then we'll just kind of keep going. Eventually we will get out of bounds. One of the pointers will go out of bounds. So either like this pointer will go over here or this pointer will go over there. When we are done, if there are any remaining characters from the string S, we can then just add them to our output. You might think, well, what if uh, that pointer was actually still in bounds and then the other pointer for this array was actually out of bounds. I don't think that's actually possible given that all these indices will technically be less than or equal to all of these. So it's not like we're gonna have any spaces, like any trailing spaces, basically based on those constraints. We don't have to worry about trailing spaces. Time complexity of this approach will be linear, I guess, n plus m, because this will be probably less than or equal to the length of that. And space-wise, if you don't account the additional space from the array, it's technically constant space, but I think we probably do need to count that because we're gonna convert the array into a string at the end. So I guess space wise, we will also say N plus M. By the way, today's problem falls under the two pointer category. You can watch some lessons about that in the advanced algorithms course on uh, Neatcode.io. Got a lot of great uh, resources to learn about uh, most of these patterns. Okay, so I'm gonna initialize two pointers. I'm gonna call them I and J initially. They're both gonna be set to zero. I'm gonna have my results array that I'm gonna build 
but it's going to be converted into a string before we return it. It's basically going to have a bunch of substrings, and then we're going to join all of those substrings together with the space as the delimiter. So uh, like this, whoops, and that's uh, what we're returning. So in terms of how long we are going to go, well, while both of the pointers are in bounds, I is going to refer to, and I just realized I was actually at the wrong problem, so the function header was different than I was expecting, so I'll just copy my pa and paste the code that I had um, here. Uh, but basically, I is going to be the pointer that refers to string s, so while that is less than s, and j is going to refer to uh, the space is string, but don't forget that j is not actually the value that we care about. We care about the actual value at position j in that index. So when we compare, that's how we're going to do the comparison. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and do that comparison right now. There's really two main cases. One is when the i pointer is less than the value at the spaces pointer at index j. That's kind of what we had when we started in the example that we were looking at. So we're, we're going to be taking the characters from string s and appending them to the result. So s at index i, and then we can also increment i at the same time. Otherwise, we are going to uh, basically take a space and then append it to the result. So result.append a space, and we would then increment j as well. Are we sure though that this works? It seems simple enough, but what exactly is going to happen? Well, in the case that i is equal to that position, we're saying that we need to add a space before position i. So that's why in the case that there's a tie between these, we are going to execute the else case. But also, there shouldn't ever really be a case where this is greater than i. So an else is sufficient. You could probably also make an else if, but it won't really make a difference. Uh, the one last thing I was talking about was at the end, we might still have some characters in s, but not any spaces left. So in that case, if i is less than length of s, we can say result dot append s and all the characters starting at s going up until the end of that string. So this is the entire code. Let's make sure that it works. Uh, whoops, I don't know why I had this length function. You can probably tell something is a little off about me today, sorry. But uh, rerunning it now, you can see that it works. And this is pretty efficient, I promise you, even though this runtime isn't entirely indicating that. In terms of the big O runtime, at least, this is optimal. This is part of the two-pointer pattern.